I officially became an artist at 19, in 1985, my first gallery exhibition in Hawaii. <laughs> But in fact, I remember I had started sculpting, I had started drawing a long time before that. I remember when my first report cards came back home, and my father said, you know what your report card says? What did it say? It says you draw very well, but that it was a math class. <laughs> Growing up, I've been always surrounded by art. Being brought up in Rome, that was unavoidable. Art was everywhere. I remember that my father was always painting, was always drawing, and that had a great influence on me. But possibly the artist that most influenced me was Salvador Dali. At that time, I was always uh, painting and drawing surrealistically because I was so fascinated by his art. Later on, I was lucky enough to be able actually to portray him in a biographical movie. <laughs> Many of you didn't know that about me. I had studied at that time, I was studying at NYU, at the uh, Lee Strasberg Theatre Institute, and I was a method actor, which means that for the duration of the movie, I became Dali. But when the movie was over, I realized that I was not Dali, that Dali was a genius, and then I needed to find my own niche. And that's when I moved away from surrealism and I became a symbolist artist and a sculptor. As a sculptor, you must know what you're going to sculpt before you begin because of the nature of the art. At that time, I was still studying drama courses, but I was also taking up some philosophy courses, which truly sparked my imagination. I remember coming across a certain poem called Footprints in the Sand. It was a beautiful poem. And I decided I want to make my first sculpture inspired by this beautiful poem. And that's why I made The Hand of God. The poem reads something like this. One night, a man had a dream. And he dreamed he was walking, he walking along the beach with the Lord. And across the sky flashed scenes from his life. And he noticed there was always, always one, two sets of footprints in the sand, one belonging to him and the other to the Lord. But when the last scene of his life flashed before him, he looked back at the footprints in the sand and noticed only one set of footprints. And he also noticed that this happened at the very lowest, lowest and saddest times in his life. This bothered the man, and he questioned the Lord about it. He said, Lord, I don't understand. You said that once I decided to follow you, you would be with me all the time. The Lord said, Son, in your moments of trials and suffering, when you only noticed one set of footprints in the sand, it is then that I carried you. Such a beautiful poem. In the beginning, I was only showing in hotels and in hotel lobbies and in uh, friends' apartments because in the beginning it's very difficult to show in uh, galleries. But I remembered clearly the difference of me exhibiting the sculpture with the poem or without the poem. With the poem, there was a certain reaction. But without the poem, they just look at the sculpture and walk on. But when they read the poem, they stopped. They observed it. And at times, even shed a tear or two. This greatly affected me from then on. It made me realize that people are attracted to the artwork even more than the artwork itself. They're attracted to the, the story behind it, that the story was the most important thing to them. In fact, from then on, I have always written texts and placed them next to the artwork. In fact, 
I write the text before I create the sculpture, and the sculpture becomes the interpretation and the materialization of the artwork. So again, the message is the important thing. <laughs> this was never more clear than the time I had an exhibition in, um, in Seoul, in South Korea. I remember my friend Noreen, she called and said, Lorenzo, I got you an exhibition at the Museum of Contemporary Art. I was so excited. I shipped my work uh, way in advance, and I kept calling her, checking up on the delivery status. And um, a week before the inauguration, Noreen called, very excited, to tell me, Lorenzo, the artwork has arrived. Um, it hasn't cleared customs yet, but don't worry, everything will be fine. Three days before the inauguration, I arrived, and Noreen said, Lorenzo, there's good news and bad news. Um, good news is, uh, the Minister of Culture has confirmed his assistance at the inauguration. Bad news, the artwork hasn't been released from uh, customs yet. But don't worry, everything will be okay, the plinths are in place, the texts, your beautiful texts, they're placed on the plinth, so all will be okay. Don't worry. Okay, don't worry. The day of inauguration, the minister cut the ribbon, 1,500 people were let through the door, and they were all surprised and taken by the show. Yes, they were all fervently discussing in front of each an empty plinth. <laughs> the art had never arrived. But because it was a contemporary art museum, they thought it was a minimalist artist. and that they had to somehow imagine the work, in fact, that the purpose of the exhibition was to stimulate people's imagination. <laughs> yeah. You see, art is, subject is subjective. Uh, they thought it was a genius, because I had turned everybody into an artist, and that they could imagine the art freely as they, as they wanted. So again, it's the message. In fact, I'm thinking of doing more shows like that because at least they'll save a lot of money on transport. <laughs> but now let me tell you a more personal story. Um, one day I noticed a client of mine started collecting a lot of artwork. And I noticed that this was uh, personal because of the titles of the artwork he was collecting. Time flies, choices, destiny, decisions, finding love, during love, and everlasting love. So I called the, the gallery. I called Russell, the gallery director. I said, Russell, I'd love to meet this client. Russell said, sure, um, let me contact him. I'll get back to you. A few days later, Russell called me back and said, Lorenzo, I spoke uh, to the client. Unfortunately, he doesn't want to meet you. What do you mean he doesn't want to meet me? This had never happened to me before. I was surprised. I said, Russell, what do you mean he doesn't want to meet me? Lorenzo, um, the client has been diagnosed with terminal cancer. And uh, through your art, he's trying to express things to his family that he can't say in words. Wow. This... Um, this hit me hard. He didn't want to break, break the spell. The words didn't come to him, but through the images of the sculptures, he could say things that otherwise he couldn't. Unfortunately, he did pass away. That's when I met his wife. She was able to rebuild her life. A few years later, she remarried to a lovely man who also had lost his wife to cancer. And he also, though, had three children. I completely empathized with all of them, because I had, at that time, three children, and I was also married. When they came to me, they then commissioned me a sculpture, and that's when I made the family link, which brought together the two families the children, and on top I placed two butterflies 
to represent the lost souls of their spouses. So again, the message, the message behind the work is what matters. Art has the power to inspire you, to move you emotionally, to create social and cultural change. When art focuses on love, it connects people on a deeper level and allows us to see humanity in everyone, regardless of their social background. And when I mention love, I don't necessarily mean love between partners. There are many expressions of love. In fact, the ancient Greeks believed in six different types of love. Eros, sexual passion. Philia, deep friendship. Ludus, playful love. Agape, love for humanity. Pragma, long-lasting love. And philaftia, love for oneself. I use these a lot in my artworks because I always try to find what we have in common and not what makes us different. Unfortunately, we live in a very polarized uh, society, driven by political and economic agendas. But I have noticed that art can truly democratize society, especially public art, because it speaks to people from all social backgrounds uh, that are not necessarily art lovers, that don't go perhaps even to museums or art galleries. In fact, they might not even like art at all. But public art transcends all that because it transcends cultural differences and language barriers. I saw this clearly with my sculpture support, a sculpture I presented in 2017 during the Venice Biennale, to raise awareness towards climate change and the rising coastal waters around the world and how swift action was needed to curb this calamity and to protect our heritage. I was helped in spreading, uh, in spreading the news of this sculpture, uh, albeit unwillingly, by President uh, Trump. Because on the day of the unveiling of the sculpture in Venice, back in the US, President Trump announced to the world that the US was pulling out of the Paris Accord for Climate Change. So happened to be that Venice was full with journalists, and so they all decided to use my sculpture as a backdrop to criticize President Trump's uh, decision. Thanks to this image and others like it, this has created an enormous social pressure by just concerned citizens viewing public art. And I have to say that thanks to this, there have been some steps that have been taken in the right decisions, but there's still so much that needs to be done. Finally, companies and governments have begun to listen. So, an image is truly worth a thousand words. Same as with my next work, Building Bridges. Building Bridges was unveiled in 2019, again at the Venice Biennale. And the original purpose of this creation was to promote a culture of bridging bridges between cultures, spreading communication and love between people. But took on a whole new role when the world was hit by the COVID pandemic. People started sharing this image on social media to express how much they missed that human touch and how sad they were during the isolation caused by the lockdown. A year later, when finally the world opened up and uh, the first public gatherings were allowed, people, 650,000 of them in fact, flocked to the Giza Plateau to a public exhibition of sculptures in front of the pyramids. I was lucky enough to be invited with my sculpture together. This was immediately shared by the public as a message of humanity coming together after COVID. Thanks. And how COVID brought the entire world under a single umbrella.
which is a good title for a new sculpture. So having the possibility through art to promote a culture of kindness, empathy, and compassion. Why would I talk about division and exclusion? Why polarize society? Through art, we can reflect the beauty of the world and the wonders of humanity. Our planet is a marvelous place. Besides, we have nowhere else to go. We're on this speck of dust, spiraling to this infinite universe. Why not share messages of love that unite us? Only love can save humanity. So let's keep creating, let's keep sharing love, and make a, po and make a po positive change for all. Thank you. <laughs>